behalf of all the membership of Eastminster, let me welcome you here today. We are here to worship the living God. We have gathered to worship him with all that we are and all that we have. In the presence of God, we raise the tartans of our clans. And let's pray. Gracious and loving God, on behalf of families of all nations, and in the name of all the families that are here represented, we present these tartans before Almighty God in appreciation of our heritage. And we ask God's blessing upon these, his humble servants. O Lord, you have promised that in all places where there is recorded your holy name, you will meet with your servants and bless them. Fulfill now your promise and make us joyful in our prayers so that our worship being offered in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and by the guidance of your Holy Spirit may be acceptable unto you and profitable unto ourselves. Bless, we pray, these tartans that they may be unto us and unto all people a token of the faith of our fathers and a sign of our service unto you. And we pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Post the Tartans. On this celebration of the 50th anniversary of the founding of Eastminster Presbyterian Church, it is with great joy and profound gratitude to God that we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As I sat here and looked at this congregation, and remembered so many things in the past and so many things that are for the future. I thought this occasion, this sanctuary was built for many things, but it was built for this occasion and this time. I wish to emphasize four salient words that I have said hundreds of times before from this pulpit. And they are, let us worship God. So join me in our call to worship. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my I will claim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as ever. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one, and I have sworn to my servant David, I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord.
Please be seated. Let us join together now in our prayer confession found in your bulletin. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be so that we may delight in your word. We continue our confession in silence. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. The Scottish words weak kirk means small church. So I'd like to invite all the smaller folks in the congregation to come join me down front. If you're a child or a child at heart, you are welcome to come. Seth. <laughs> he wants to oh, this is a great group. Look, spread out all across. This is wonderful. Well, we're all here together to celebrate the fact that the church is 50 years old. Someday you're going to be that old. Has anyone ever asked you what you're going to be when you grow up? Most of us don't know until we get grown up, and sometimes we get it wrong, don't we? Well, one time Jesus came back to his synagogue, which was his church, when he was all grown up. 
And he was invited to take the Bible. And the Bible back then was the Old Testament, just what we have in the Old Testament. And he read some verses out of Isaiah. And then he said, today, this has been fulfilled in your hearing. Meaning, I'm the one that's going to fulfill those words. And he said wonderful things like, I'm going to help the poor. And I'm going to help the sick. And I'm going to help the people that are in prison. And the people thought, this is wonderful. But they thought it was just for them. And then Jesus says, no, this is for everybody. I want them to know that God loves every single person in the world. His own friends who watched him grow up said, mm, we don't like this. We want you to leave. But fortunately, other people heard what he said, and they liked it. And they shared it with all the people that they could find. And the church got bigger and bigger and bigger. And today, part of what we celebrate is the Scottish heritage because the Presbyterian church came from Scotland. But the Scottish believed the same thing, that God loved everybody. And so that's how it made it all the way to America because they wanted to share God's love and do good things with everyone. Later on in the service, all the adults, along with you, are going to promise that very thing when we say the affirmation of faith. Because it ends at the very end by saying, you are wonderful to God. And what they believe now and then and what we believe now is just that. That Jesus came to show us that God loves every single one of you and our mission the reason we're still the church is to tell the same people that word that God loves everyone and God wants us to help the people that are poor help the people that are sick help the prisoners and take care of everybody so let's have a prayer and thank God for that great big love of God. God, we thank you for the full house this morning, and we thank you that every single one of them can hear the good news that they are wonderful, that we are wonderful to you. Help us believe it for every single person in this world. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Our Old Testament lesson is found in the book of Leviticus, chapter 25, verses 8 through 24. It's found in the Old Testament part of your pew Bible on page 140. Listen now for the word of God. You shall count off seven weeks of years, seven times seven years, so that the period of seven weeks of years gives 49 years. Then you shall have the trumpet sounded loud. On the tenth day of the seventh month, on the day of atonement, you shall have the trumpet sounded throughout all your land. And you shall proclaim, you shall hallow the fiftieth year, and you shall proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you, to your property, and every one to your family. That 50th year shall be a jubilee for you. You shall not sow or reap the aftergrowth or harvest the unpruned vines, for it is a jubilee. It shall be holy to you. You shall eat only what the field itself produces. In this year of Jubilee, you shall return every one of you to your property. Then you make a sale to your neighbor or buy from your neighbor. You shall not cheat one another. When you buy from your neighbor, you shall pay only for the number of years since the Jubilee. The seller can charge you only for the remaining crop years. If the years are more, you shall increase the price. And if the years are fewer, you shall diminish the price. For it is a certain number of harvests that are being sold to you. You shall not cheat one another, but you shall fear your Lord, for I am the Lord your God. You shall observe my statues and faithfully keep my ordinances, so that you may live on the land securely. The land will yield its fruit, and you will eat your fill and live on it securely. Should you ask, what shall we eat in the seventh year? If we may not sow or gather in our crop, I will order my blessing for you in the sixth year so that it will yield a crop for three years. When you sow in the eighth year, you shall be eating from the old crop until the ninth year when, it produce, when its produce comes in. You shall eat the old. The land shall not be sold in perpetuity, for the land is mine. With me you are but aliens and tenants." Throughout the land that you hold, you shall provide for the redemption of the land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament lesson comes from from Luke. It is not page four, I know. Um, You can find it if you like to follow along. Hear now these words from Luke's gospel. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee and A report about him spread through all of the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the release of the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll. He gave it back to the attendant, and he sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, 
this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Truly, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fifty years. It's a long time to some, it's just yesterday to others. But in the midst of our celebrating the Kirking of the Tartans, we have the privilege and pleasure of celebrating our 50th year of ministry here on Hugh Howell. Um, service, worship, learning, giving, all that has been done here over the 50 years. Oh, so many years ago, there were a few that had a vision. They had a vision for this area, for a church here. But they did more than just have a vision. They developed a plan, and they were committed to that plan. And with God's power and his spirit, he has led us to where we are this day. There are many that we should be giving thanks to, and many of you are right here. A few who are leading in worship have a special place in the hearts of Eastminster. Um, I think of the formative years and Bob Ashworth and Libba, how they steered the course that was right. As the neighborhood grew, as there was great excitement in this area, um, Walter Jones and his wife Jean, they came and they were able to literally move it through some of the better times that Eastminster has enjoyed. And Eastminster has always had a marvelous music ministry. And we give thanks to, to John and to Ed for their ever, ever hard work in developing and maintaining the music ministry that we enjoy today. 1967 seems like a long time ago, but there were a lot of firsts in that year. Um, not that I remember all these from my early age, but um, believe it or not, um, there were some firsts. Um, President Lyndon Johnson appointed the first African-American justice to the United States Supreme Court in 1967. Six Flags opened its doors for the first time in 1967, and I was hired for my first summer job being supervisor of maintenance. <laughs> Any of you who have spent much time at Six Flags know what kind of job that was. <laughs> Some doctors got together in South Africa, and they performed the first successful human heart-to-heart -heart surgery in that year. The American Basketball Association was formed. And, as you might note, the NFL and the AFL played their first championship game. It came to be known as Super Bowl I. A little bit of trivia, the Atlanta Falcons won one game that year, if you remember. <laughs> and Elvis Presley. He recorded how great thou art. The years have gone by. Good years and bad years. But here at Eastminster, we remember that a seed was planted that year. The soil, it was fertile. The harvest has been great. And the fruits of that harvest have been many. For you see, the servants of God followed their master these many, many years. But it's Jubilee. It's that 50th year, and if you listen to the words of the Old Testament, you'll know that that is where Jubilee comes from. We tend to use it for many different ways. If you get your dictionary out and look up Jubilee in English, and we find that it talks about all kinds of occasions and anniversaries and special times getting together. But for the Hebrew, it was a very specific meaning, this jubilee. Um, it actually has, a interest, has an interesting meaning. 
The Hebrew word jubilee is jubilee, and it means the sound that comes from the trumpet when it is played by the priest. God was calling his people and was telling them that there would be a time the sound of the trumpets always gave the Hebrews a sign of expectation. Jubilee. If you read the 23rd, the 24th, and the 25th chapter of Leviticus, you will read all about those feasts all about those festivals, all about those special times that God gave his people after they had just left Egypt. As they were developing their own lifestyle, if you will, God gave them times to stop and reflect. He gave them the week, work six days, and on the seventh, rest. For it is a holy day. He said, when the first fruits came, when you celebrated that wait seven weeks and then celebrate again because you need to remember that I have provided all of this. And for the kids, remember that when Jericho was under siege by the Israelites, God said, all you need to do is walk around six times and on the seventh time, those walls They came a-tumbling down. You see, God always offered all he had to his people, but called for them at various times and places to stop and to consider all that they had and all that they had received from him. And Jubilee was not only one of those, but it was a special one. Now, the festival of Jubilee was not like the rest. It was not like when God called them together in a holy convocation. It was not like that time he would call them to bring offerings, burn offerings, meal offerings, drink offerings, sin offerings, peace offerings to remember what he had done, to be reminded of where they had been, to repent to all that they had done. No, Jubilee was, was different. Jubilee was not about what they were doing, but all about what God wanted to do. It was special. If you listen to the words that Mardi read, you heard what happened. First of all, everything came to rest. The land lay fallow. The people were not to work. And all things went back. Did you hear about that? The prisoner was set free. All debts were forgiven. And the land went back to the original owner. In some respects, it was a divine intervention. It was God literally correcting what the people had done wrong for 50 years. You see, he cautioned the Israelites before they left Egypt. He said, you are going to come into a land that I have given you. You will live in homes you did not build. You will enjoy vineyards you did not plant. And you will forget from whence it came. And sure enough, as God had given the Israelites all they ever needed, he gave them a law. And he said, every 50 year, I'm going to clean the slate. I'm going to level the playing field. We're going to put it back the way I intended it to be. And there's some irony here. For neither in the scripture nor written history was Jubilee ever celebrated. Think about it. 
Think about what it would have done to the human structure at that time. Oh, the people in jail would have loved it. Those that owed a lot of money would have been grateful. But what about commerce in general? All of the debts forgiven, all of the property back? Woo, Lord, we can't do that. That would upset our apple cart that we love. No, no divine correction, no past imbalances corrected. The people simply remembered but never delivered jubilee. The prophets spoke of it. They talked about a day of God's favor, a day when one would come, an anointed one, and he would come and he would preach good news to the poor. And his coming, the captive would be set free. The poor would hear the good news. The oppressed would be released. But it was a day to come. It was a promise in the future. And something that God's people never brought about. And the days turned into weeks, turned into years. And even there was a time when the prophets' voices were silent. And then in a moment... A moment almost not even seen or heard by many. In an obscure little village called Nazareth, a hometown boy was invited to preach in the synagogue. He took the scripture, he rolled it out to the 61st chapter of Isaiah. And he recalled to them that year, that year of God's favor, that year where the poor would hear the gospel, where the oppressed would be the released, where those who were indebted would be free. And they wondered when that would be. And Jesus said, today in your hearing, this scripture is true. You see, what humans could not do, Jesus Christ has done. You see, Jesus Christ came and he is the one that cleaned the slate. Jesus Christ is the one who, for us, levels the playing field. Jesus Christ is the one who is bringing divine correction to you and to me. You see, Jubilee is when we celebrate Jesus Christ and the life that he gives us. For you see, Jesus came and he said, if you are oppressed, if you are oppressed by poor decisions that you have made, maybe it is addictive behavior. Maybe it's dangerous habits. Jesus said, I will free you from that. Jesus comes to those who are blind unto him and do not hear his word and lead them unto life. You see, that day of reckoning, that day when the divine correction comes is the day that Jesus comes into our lives, into yours, into mine, and we are literally and ultimately set free. For you see, Jesus is our hope. When things look hopeless, Jesus is our life in the face of death. He is our Savior. He is our Lord. He is head of the church. For you and for me, Jesus Christ is our jubilee.
When the search committee came to talk with me, I asked them frankly, are there any lemons I will need to worry about? And they said, not one. But when Caleb refers to first fruits, because this was my first congregation, you were what I experienced. Love and joy and peace and patience, all those fruits about which scripture refers. I suppose as long as there is football and golf, we will struggle with self-control. <laughs> Nevertheless, you made me a better person and we grew together, maturing as faith does with age. Look around now and see what a crop Eastminster has produced. Standing now 50 years in the faith together, let us affirm what we believe. God made the world and all its creatures with men and women made in his image. By breaking his laws, people have broken contact with God and damaged his good world. This we see and sense in the world and in ourselves. The Bible tells us the good news that God still loves us and has shown his love uniquely in his son, Jesus Christ. He lived among us and died on the cross to save us from our sins and God raised him from the dead. In his love, this living Jesus invites us to turn from our sins and enter by faith into restored relationship with God, who gives true life before and beyond death, then with the power of the Holy Spirit, remaking us like Jesus, we, with all Christians, worship God, enjoy his friendship, and are available for him to use and sharing and showing his love, justice and peace, locally and globally, until Jesus returns. In Jesus' name, we gladly share with our neighbors God's message for all people. You matter to God. Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, on this day of celebration of heritage and clan, we thank you for the blessings you have given us. We remember those early Scottish Presbyterians who were not free to worship, who met in secret or in defiance of the king, or who left their homeland for America in hopes that here there would be freedom to practice their faith. We thank you for allowing us to celebrate that Scottish heritage, not having to hide scraps of tartan cloth in fear of imprisonment. We remember that heritage as we also remember the gift of Eastminster to this community the courage of the founding mothers and fathers of our congregation to step out in faith, worshiping and praying that a community of believers would grow and form a witness to you. We admire them for that courage, to discern what you were calling them to do, to take on debt, to bravely work as a welcoming cloud of witnesses. We remember those saints of the church who have gone before us, and we pledge to carry on their legacy of working to reflect your grace with witness and compassion and care for our brothers and sisters around us. We remember today those in our family who are ill, who grieve, who are so frail that they cannot join us in celebration in person. 
We especially remember Matt Adams and Jenny Matthews this morning. Help us to continue to care for each other. We remember our elected officials in Washington and those of our local officials. Help them remember that they are called to make decisions that are just. We pray for our military here at home and abroad as they attempt to keep our nation safe in an unsafe, dangerous world. We remember that while we are comfortable in the havens of our own homes, they are exposed to violence and possible death. Protect them, Lord. As we go to celebrate a meal together, we remember those who will not have a meal today, who often have no meal of any kind. Help us to be generous so that all of your children are fed. We remember those who have no place to sleep tonight, who have no friend to turn to in times of trouble, who have no way to pay the rent. Help us to be generous so that all of your children are safe. And most especially, Lord, we pray for peace. For that peace that Jesus gave us as our inheritance, the peace that Jubilee celebrates, freedom from want and debt and war, freedom to celebrate Sabbath, a peace of heart that allows us to face the day knowing that we are blessed and loved and surrounded by God's mercy. We pray these things in the name of your jubilee witness in the world, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
we of all people have received so much, all from the bounty of God's hand. As we allow the redemption of Christ to cast a shadow over our lives, let us return unto God a token of all that he has received. Let us pray. For your continued blessing of this church, we give you thanks, gracious Lord. For all the times you have blessed us and we have seen it, but especially for all the times that you have given us your best, but we have not seen it or refused to notice, we give you thanks. For the pillars of this church who have labored in love and built what we have here today. And for those who come Sunday after Sunday giving you worship and praise with joyful hearts and open hands, we give you thanks, gracious Lord. For the sick and the tired, the mourners and also the happy in spirit who gather to form your body at Eastminster, 
we give you thanks. For this offering, for the surprising ways in which you gently remind us that it is you who sustains us, we give you thanks, gracious God. May we seek your face in our community and bless our neighbors and our city with what has been entrusted to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Immediately following this worship service, those of you who have reservations for lunch are invited to make your way orderly and in good fashion down your left to my right 
And as you enter the gym, go ahead and find a seat and sit down as soon as possible. We wish we could invite everyone, but um, if the founding fathers had built a bigger gym, we could have done it. <laughs> but we are blessed with what we have. It's amazing grace. That's where it starts, and that's where it ends. As we leave this place, beginning yet another 50 years, there are still seeds to sow. There are harvests that need to be reaped. And there's fruit that need to be born. It's because amazing grace that not under our own strength, but in the strength of the power of God and his spirit that we are able to do that. This isn't a day when it's all over. It's a day when it all begins. And it begins because of amazing grace. So as we go from this place, we go in the love of God. We go in the power of his spirit. And we go in the mercy and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ now and forever. Amen.